Right now, the 1590 is the most powerful gaming GPU that you can buy. The 1590 Founders Edition is the cheapest 1590 model that you can find. In some countries, you may be able to find other models at the same price, but shops tend to ask a bit more than the recommended price. In this video, I'm gonna check how close can a 5080 overclocked and a 9070 XT overclocked can get to a stock 5090. The 5080 that I got is the Zotac Solid base model, not the overclocked version, while the 9070 XT model is the Red Devil from Power Color. The latter comes by default with an increased power limit and higher clock speeds. When it comes to the 5080, this one has ample room for overclocking. For testing, I use these settings. I increase the power limit by 11%, the core clock by 375 MHz, and the memory by 1500 MHz. The Red Devil 9070XT is further overclocked as well, plus 85 MHz core speed, minus 45 mV undervolt. The memory speed was increased by 230 MHz, while the power limit was increased by 10% from the base 340 watts. On both GPUs I used a more aggressive fan curve in order to maintain higher clock speeds and reduce any chance of thermal throttling. When it comes to the performance improvements over stock settings, the 5080 saw a 13% performance increase in sterile blade, an 8% advantage over stock in Warhammer 3 and again an 8% uplift over stock in Witcher 3 where RT was enabled, just to name a few games. Overall, the 5080 has seen, on average, a 12% performance uplift versus stock. It could squeeze a bit more on certain models, but don't expect much more. The Red Devil 9070 XT, as it is overclocked by default, sees less gains, but nonetheless, in Warhammer 3 I got a 6% uplift over stock settings, in Stellar Blade the uplift was around 8%, while in Doom the Dark Ages, using ray tracing, I got a 6% bump in performance. Overall, in the games tested, I saw a performance uplift of around 7%. With these performance uplifts, surely the 5090 will lead in all games, right? Well, to my surprise, not all games were seeing performance uplifts when going with the 5090 over the other two overclocked GPUs, so stay tuned. The 1590 Founders Edition usually is outperformed by AIB models, but the gap sits between 1 and 5%. The performance difference can be mitigated by undervolting the Founders Edition and increasing the core speed. I'm gonna test it in its stock settings, with only the fan curve being adjusted a bit so that I get lower temps and less chances of thermal throttling. Let's start first with Counter-Strike 2 using competitive settings only at 1440p. The 1590 leads in this game, followed by the 5080 and the last is the 9070 XT. The AMD GPU produced the best 1% low values delivering almost 40% better results than the 5090. The 5090 utilization drops to around 75% in some areas, while the other two GPUs always sit above 90% GPU utilization, thus this is why we have the 1% low value gap. Marvel Rivals is the other competitive game that I tested, again only at 1440p. In this game the 5090 leads the 5080 by 16%, while the advantage over the AMD GPU sits at around 39%. Mafia The World Country is a new game and at 1440p, as expected, the 5090 leads the other two GPUs. It has a 16% lead over the 5080 and almost 25% over the 9070 XT, both overclocked. At 4K though, the 5090 delivers better 1% low values than the averages of the overclocked 5080, while the AMD GPU delivers on average 48% less frames. Stellar Blade is a game that favors NVIDIA GPUs and because of that at 1440p the 5090 stock delivers on average 80% more frames than the 9070XT overclocked while the overclocked 5080 delivers 16% less frame rates. At 4K the 5090 shines and the overclocked GPUs the 5080 and the 9070XT trail it by 28% and 114% respectively. I tested the altars using these settings at 1440p. 
The RTX 5080 overclocked, matched the stock 5090 and delivered better 1% low values. The 9070 XT overclocked trailed both Nvidia GPUs by 45% when it comes to averages. At 4K, the 5090 overtakes the overclocked 5080 by 4%, while the overclocked 9070 XT delivers 67% less performance. The Last of Us 2 is a game where at 1440p the overclocked GPUs were trailing the stock 5090 by a bigger margin than usual. The 9070XT overclocked is trailing the stock 5090 by 51%, while the 5080 overclocked by 33%. At 4K, the 5090 leads the overclock 5080 by 38% and enjoys a 72% lead over the overclock 9070XT. Let's now move to the 1440p charts where we can see that the 5090 is only matched by the 5080 overclocked in the alters. I actually tested the alters with a minor 100 MHz core clock boost on the 5090 and I gained 4 FPS more on average, so it seems that this game likes high core clocks. The 9070XT never managed to come close to the 5090 or overclocked 5080, but then again you can buy 3 of them for the price of the 5090. Overall, the 5090 enjoyed the 15% lead over the overclocked 5080, while the gap between it and the 9070 XT stood at 49%. When it comes to the 1% lows, the gap was smaller. The overclocked AMD GPU was trailing Nvidia's flagship by 19%, while the overclocked 5080 by 7%. 4K is where the 5090 shines, as the CPU is able to push it close to 100% utilization in all games. The Oddity is again the Alters, a game that favors higher clock speeds, and the overclock 5080 had around 500 MHz more. In all other games, the gap is significant. Overall, the 5090 led the overclocked 5080 by 28%, while the lead over the 9070XT overclocked stands at around 85%. Now, let's have a look at ray tracing scenarios. First, Let's start with Monster Hunter Wilds, a game that is not ray tracing intensive. At 1440p we can see that the 5090 enjoys a 14% lead over the overclock 5080, while the 9070XT overclocked was trailing by 24%. At 4K, the 5090 spread its wings. The 9070XT overclocked is 48% behind Nvidia's flagship, while the overclocked 5080 delivers 25% less performance. Ratchet & Clank is an older game that sees a huge gap even at 1440p. The 1590 delivers better 1% low values than the averages obtained by the overclocked 5080, while the 9070XT overclocked trailed the 1590 by a massive 87%. At 4K, the 1590 reigns supreme, and the 9070 overclocked comes close to the overclocked 5080. In Doom the Dark Ages at 1440p with path tracing disabled, the 5090 has a 22% lead over the overclocked 5080 and a 40% lead over the 9070XT overclocked. At 4K, the gap between the 5090 and the other overclocked GPUs spreads to 27% against the 5080 overclocked and to 61% over the frames achieved by the overclocked 9070XT. In Witcher 3, at 1440p using these settings, the 5090 had a significant lead over the 5080 overclocked that stood at around 26%. This gap increases at 4K with the 5090 leading by 39% the overclocked 5080 and by 84% the 9070 XT overclocked. And this is the 1440p chart for the ray tracing games. Even in light racing games like Monster Hunter Wilds, the overclock 5080 is not able to come close to the 5090, while the AMD GPU is in a lower leak altogether. Other way, when turning on ray tracing, the 5090 on average delivered 25% more performance than the overclock 5080, while the 9070XT overclocked was behind by 61%. The 4K chart for ray tracing in games shows the true strength of the 5090. There is no game where the overclock 5080 comes close, let alone the overclocked 9070 XT. 
On average, the 1590 was ahead of the overclock 5080 by 34% and 70% over the 9070 XT overclocked. To be honest, I was expecting a bigger gap between the 1590 and the overclock 5080, but the performance uplift over the 5080 stock is good. The 1590 FE clocks are kind of low in my opinion and I think it prioritizes power over speed. I tested another 1590 a few weeks back, the Gigabyte 1590 Winforce OC, and that one maintained higher clocks at the expense of power. I applied a small core speed bump of 125 MHz to the Founders Edition and I was able to match the Windforce OC version without an issue. The rumored 5080 Super will not be able to catch the 1590 as it seems that it will be a 58 on steroids, but the 24GB will be a good fit for a GPU that costs this much. AMD doesn't have a contender for the 1590 and the 5080 is out of its reach. Current generation NVIDIA GPUs tend to gain more when overclocked as opposed to AMD GPUs. So, if you are a person that likes to tweak your GPU to extract the most out of it, the 50 series is great for that. Now, the pricing is the most important and in some cases free 9070XT models can cost less than 1590. The performance difference of the 5090 is not 3 times over the 9070XT and not 2 times over the 5080. Even the 5080 opposed to the 9070XT is not a good value when price to performance is taken into consideration. And there you go, the 5090 can't be matched by overclocking the 5080 or the 9070XT. For competitive games the 5090 makes little sense as the performance gains over the 5080 is not worth the extra price. And that's it for this video. If you found it useful, hit the thumbs up button, consider subscribing to the channel and drop a comment below and let me know what GPU do you have. Take care and hope to see you all in the next one.